Hello guys, now in this video, let's discuss about calcium homeostasis. See, parathyroid hormone, PTH. Parathyroid hormone is getting produced from parathyroid glands. Now in the parathyroid glands, the cells are called as the chief cells and these chief cells are producing the parathyroid hormone. The important function of the parathyroid hormone is to increase the blood calcium levels. And which hormone decreases the blood calcium levels? It's the calcitonin. Okay, calcitonin which is coming from the parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland. Parafollicular cells of thyroid gland are producing the calcitonin which will decrease the blood levels of calcium. So we can say parathyroid hormone and calcitonin they are antagonistic hormones. Okay. Now let's see what are the functions of the parathyroid hormone. Wherever you see parathyroid hormone it increases the blood calcium levels. How? See whenever parathyroid hormone is released in pulsatile doses. Okay. In a regular intervals. Now, that pulsatile dose of parathyroid hormone will stimulate the osteoblast and it will help in bone formation. But whenever you have the parathyroid hormone in a continuous doses, it stimulates osteoclasts which will cause bone resorption. So, it all depends on whether the parathyroid hormone is coming in pulsatile doses or continuous doses. If there is continuous high levels of parathyroid hormone, then that parathyroid hormone will cause bone resorption or bone destruction. Pulsatile release, normal physiologically what happens is a pulsatile release. So whenever there is a pulsatile release, it stimulates osteoblasts, helps in bone formation. Let's see what are the functions of parathyroid hormone. When parathyroid hormone is acting on bone, what will happen in a pulsatile doses? It stimulates the osteoblasts. When osteoblasts are stimulated, osteoclasts are going to produce something called as rank ligand. Okay, rank ligand. Now this rank ligand will act on osteoclasts. Now osteoclasts are activated. Now there will be bone resorption. Now whenever bone is getting resorbed, that will cause increased calcium levels. Guys, see osteoclastic activity is under the control of osteoblasts okay so parathyroid hormone first activates osteoblast then osteoblast will produce rank ligand and that rank ligand will activate osteoclast so whether to activate osteoclast or not it depends on osteoblasts okay so whenever it's needed bone resorption will happen that increases the blood calcium levels so what happens is whenever you have parathyroid hormone in continuous dose continuous doses now osteoblast will produce rank ligand Okay, that activates osteoclast. But whenever the parathyroid hormone is released in pulsatile doses, then only osteoblasts are activated in such a way, only bone formation will happen. Continuous doses, high levels will activate osteoblasts in such a way, it produces rank ligand that activate osteoclasts, bone resorption happen and blood calcium levels are increased. Okay. Now, parathyroid hormone will also act on the kidneys. That means it will also act on the nephrons. So, parathyroid hormone increases the calcium reabsorption. It's not just absorption, it is reabsorption. Okay, reabsorption of calcium happens and phosphates are excreted out of the body. Remember, parathyroid hormone, PTH as phosphate trashing hormone. Parathyroid hormone trashes out the phosphate from the body. If phosphate and calcium are there in one place, they will attract each other. Calcium is plus and PO4 is minus. They will form, they will attract and they will form bonds and they will precipitate as calcium phosphates. So, if calcium phosphates are there, means like you know, the ionic calcium levels are going down. So, what parathyroid hormone wants to do is it only wants to elevate calcium, it only wants free calcium. So, to increase the free calcium levels, it takes out the phosphate from the body. So, there is no one to come and attach with the calcium. So, calcium stays in a free form, ionic form, which will increase the blood calcium levels or serum levels. Now, the Parathyroid hormone, it will also act on PCT of the nephron and especially in the PCT of the nephron, there was this one uh, important enzyme called as alpha-1 hydroxylase. When alpha-1 hydroxylase is activated because of parathyroid hormone, vitamin D activation will happen. What exactly is vitamin D activation? We know, we have already seen this. 
conversion of 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol into 1 comma 25 dihydroxy cholecalciferol with the help of alpha 1 hydroxylase happens in the proximal convoluted tubule and that's also under the control of parathyroid hormone so parathyroid hormone is the one actually controls the activity of alpha 1 hydroxylase so whenever there is parathyroid hormone alpha 1 hydroxylase is now working now it converts inactive vitamin d into active vitamin d which is calcitriol or 1 comma 25 dihydroxy cholecalciferol now what this vitamin D will do? Vitamin D will go to the GIT mucosa. There in GIT mucosa, it increases both absorption of calcium as well as it increases the absorption of phosphates. Okay. Also vitamin D acts on the nephrons, also increases the reabsorption of calcium. Now let's see a few important drugs which are used in the treatment of osteoporosis. Okay. This is something a pharmacological link. Guys, here I want you to know the first group of drugs to treat osteoporosis. So what exactly is osteoporosis? Decrease in the bone mineral density. Bones are getting thinned out. Bones are getting more reabsorbed. So the bone mineral density is getting decreased. So how we can treat this condition based on what the concept whatever we have shared so far. See bisphosphonates are the group of drugs which include salantronate, zolantronate, pamidronate. Now these drugs, what is the mechanism of action? It's very simple. They will inhibit the osteoclast or causes the apoptosis of osteoclast. We know osteoclasts are the bone resorbing cells. So whenever you take out osteoclast, bone resorption is not happening. When bone resorption is not happening, that will treat osteoporosis, right? Either you have to increase the bone formation or you have to decrease the bone resorption. So bisphosphonates are the drug of choice for treating the osteoporosis. What they will do? They will inhibit the osteoclasts. What are the drugs? Salantronate, dibantronate, pamidronate zolentronate all these drugs the most important side effect is esophagitis and osteonecrosis of jaw especially while well, taking these drugs they will cause esophageal irritation okay you have to take these drugs with a lot of water you have to do like a you know, lot of hydration and also you have to uh, sit in upright position uh, for, for the next 30 minutes you should not the patient should not lie down that's a very important point to know okay esophagitis esophageal irritation um, osteonecrosis of the jaw are the side effects now Let's talk about one more drug which is called as Reloxifene. Guys, Reloxifene is nothing but a CERM. CERM means Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulator. You need to know something about estrogens. Estrogens are protective, bone protective, which means normally estrogens inhibit the osteoclast. Simple, remember it like this. Estrogens will inhibit the osteoclasts so that there is no bone resorption. Now, Reloxifene is a kind of estrogen. Simple, it's acting like estrogen. Whenever it's acting like estrogen, it also inhibits osteoclast so that there won't be bone resorption. If there is no bone resorption, osteoporosis is treated. Simple. Now, let's talk about teriparatide. What exactly is teriparatide? Teriparatide is a recombinant parathyroid hormone. Normally, parathyroid hormone is the one which acts on bone, causes bone resorption, increases the blood calcium levels. Then why we are using it in the treatment of osteoporosis? Because, see, the concept is, yes, it is parathyroid hormone, but when you give in pulsatile doses, I have taught you, parathyroid hormone in pulsatile doses, it will stimulate the osteoblast, helps in bone formation. But parathyroid hormone in high concentrations and continuous doses will activate osteoclast causes bone resorption so teriparatide is one such hormone whenever you give it in pulsatile doses it acts on osteoblast helps in bone formation treats osteoporosis and the last group of drug uh, not last but denosumab is a kind of drug see it's ending with the name mab monoclonal antibody now yes it's an antibody inactivating what see this the denosumab it's a monoclonal antibody inhibits the rank ligand what is this rank ligand which i have seen Osteoblasts, whenever they are continuously stimulated by parathyroid hormone, they are going to produce rank ligand which will activate osteoclast. So rank ligand is the one which activate the osteoclast. So what we are doing, we are producing an antibody which will go and attack the rank ligand. So rank ligand is taken out from the play. So whenever there is no rank ligand, osteoclast cannot be activated. Bone resorption cannot happen, osteoporosis is treated. So, it's a monoclonal antibody which is inhibiting the rank ligand given subcutaneously. And the last group of drug is the strontium renalate. Guys, this drug is very, very important because see, whatever the drugs we have which we have seen so far, either they have stimulated the osteoblast or they have inhibited the osteoclast. But the strontium renalate is a kind of drug which is having two hands. With one hand, it is inhibiting the osteoclast. With other hand, it is stimulating the osteoblast. Means both, both functions which are beneficial in treatment of osteoporosis. 
Okay guys, hope the video is helpful. See you in the next video.